Hello everyone, welcome to Brahma Music. This is the very first lesson we are going to have and because it's the first one, we shall not learn many things, we are going to learn a few things and once again, I welcome you. So today we are going to look at the introduction to music and introduction to music will open our mind, will make us understand what really we want to know or what really are we going to do in this lesson and even the future lessons so we shall go ahead music is something so sweet that's why i've written there the sweet world of music because every time you walk you can have a song in your mind you can hear someone sing you can hear a song played by someone in a an instrument or in a phone like that so music is very sweet so first we are going to look at the meaning of music music as i've just said that you can hear it from anywhere, you can have it within yourself. So music is any sound, either instrumental or vocal, that is pleasing to the ear. So we don't want things that are not pleasing to the ear. Everything that you hear and that is pleasing to your ear, that makes you feel good, that's music. It can either be played by someone in a guitar, in the keyboard, organ, whatever. Someone can be singing or you can be singing it inside yourself. That's music because it's pleasing to your ear. And we can go ahead and look at ways in which people can write music. There are two ways in which people can write music. That is staff notation and solver notation. But for, for us, in everything that we are going to do here, this is lesson one and we shall have other lessons, we are going to dwell on the first one, that is staff notation. Maybe in the future lessons, we can look at solver notation. But now, we are doing solver the staff notation the first one so we can go ahead and define terms used in staff notation first of all we have a word called staff also called stave this word or these two words mean the same thing and it is five parallel lines with four spaces within them as you can see on the right hand side there are five lines which are parallel you can count them one two three four and five and within them there are four spaces so those five parallel lines with four spaces within them are the ones called staff also called stave that's the first time we're going to look at and we can look at this stuff what is it like what does it have its composition so we're going to look at about the stuff the first thing there is the five lines of the stuff are numbered from below upwards that is lines one two three four and five starting from bottom going upwards you can see the five lines here there are five so each line has a number there is one two three four up to five the first one from below is called line one the second one going upwards is line two and the top most the topmost line is called line five that's how the, the arrangement is we can look at them here we can see there is something before one there is something that thing is called a, a cliff it's a g cliff we shall reach there very soon so the first line is called one the second going upwards is two the third one is the middle one the fourth is the second from up and the first from up is called line five hope you're getting that mark this because we shall be having many things about this we shall be referring to line two to line one like that also, if you are using the F clef, this was G clef, and the, the next one was is now the F clef or the bass clef. Even using this clef, we shall still call the same lines 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 from bottom going upwards. It's just the same. There's another type of clef also, it's called C clef. They are, as long as it's a staff, the lines are numbered that way. You cannot start from up going downwards. If you do that, then you have spoiled the game, and which is wrong. So, let's continue. We can look at this term called clef. A clef is a, an English term. It comes from Italian word which may, which is called clavis. Clavis is in Italian. Italian means key, like the opening of something. So here we are going to say that a clef is like a key to the staff. The five lines are the staff. So the the clef acts like a key to the staff. It guides to finding the exact letter names of the staff lines. We have first looked at the letter names of the lines here. We are seeing the, the number lines. It's the number one, number two, number three, four, and five. Also, these lines 
apart from these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, these lines also have other names which are letters ranging from A to G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And again from G it goes to A. G, A, B, C, D like that until G. Again it starts from A. So those A, B, C, D like that up to G are given to these lines according to the clef that is found in the staff. We are saying this, the clef is like a key to the staff. It guides on or to finding the exact letter names of the staff lines exact letter names we are talking here about the letter names and not the the numbers of the lines not the number but the letter letter a b like that so here the clef here is called f clef and we shall look at it we shall know which line is f which line is any name that it deserves here we have the f clef the one we've just looked at here so this f clef we are calling it f clef or also base clef and if if you can look at the clef how it looks like this one line in which the clef touches more than the rest if you look at line one the first line from the bottom the clef does not touch the second line from bottom the clef touches once the third line from bottom the clef touches also once the fourth line from bottom one two three four the clef touches it twice you see that the beginning and also some part in its curve and the upper line that's in line five is also touched something which looks like twice eh? but it's supposed to be touching once so here we got we have looked at the four lines the four lines have been touched by this clef and the clef that the line that has been touched by this clef more times is the fourth line so that line the fourth line which has been touched by this clef called f clef which has been touched more times will be given the name of that clef here we can call this line 4 the line f that's the letter name of that so because we are calling that letter f we now consider our alphabet order the alphabet order is a b c d e f g like that going upwards and, and then descending order also you we shall follow it the same way so here if we've said that the fourth line is called line f then the space above it must be g and cannot be e because when we are going upwards we are following the alphabetical order so if the line the fourth line which has been touched by f clef more times has been given the name f so the upper space above f is called space g and the line above g is called line a and also the space above that a is called space b if you're coming downwards from f from the main point f the the note not the note but the alphabet be behind e or when we are coming downwards from z coming all the way to a just before after f coming towards a there is letter e so the space below f is called space e also the space after the line after space e is called d following that way going from d to c to b to a that's how we can Start from A, A, B, C, D, E, F, the central point, G. After G, there is no H. We have said that the letter names here are only seven. It is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. From G, again, you begin from A, like that. So, I hope you've understood this. And if you don't understand, you can still ask in the comment section below there. You can write what you don't understand. And in the second lesson, I shall repeat what is there to be repeated. And so that you understand. Because... We are supposed to move on together. Um, also, there is a clef called C clef. The clef you are seeing here is called C clef. Here we are saying it's called F clef. F clef, the line that is touched by this clef more times, is given the name F. Here we have C clef. The C clef has a middle part. If you can look at it well, it looks like, like a B. Like it looks like a B, but it's called C clef. And in the middle of it, that's where C will be. This clef is used for writing either alto, voice, or tenor. When it's used for writing alto, it looks like this. It can also be used for writing tenor. It looks exactly like this, but how it's put in the staff is different. It's slightly raised up such that such that the second line, no, the fourth line, one, two, three, four, the fourth line becomes the center. That's when you're 
using it for writing tena but now because we are using it for writing alto the third line line one two three line third line will be in the middle so this one any line that lies in the middle of this clef this clef is called c clef and any line that lies in the middle of c clef is called c line c i hope you're understanding that that any line that is lying in the middle of c clef is given is assigned the name c letter c so the upper space is given d the upper line of upper from c d we are going to e the space above e is called f and the line above f is called g also coming downwards from the central point c uh, we have b the space b we have also the line a which is below below that b and because we are saying the letters are going from a b c d e f g there is no h so immediately after a there is g below it i hope you understand that also you can see from the line one two three four five in the line five if that is given if line five is given the name g so the space above it must be a because there is no h i hope you understand that comment section is there for you please do not hesitate you can write there and you shall understand so we had we have been looking at these clefs like the term clef and the meaning and we said that there are three types of clefs is g clef f clef and c clef first of all we have looked at the f clef which is that one we have looked at the c clef now we are going to look at the g clef g clef has many names which are several names the first name is called g clef the another one is called the violin clef the soprano clef and also it's also called treble clef all those are its names and this clef is used for writing two voices it can be used for writing soprano and it can also be used for writing alto I hope you understand that now you can look at this clef it has many things in particular you can look at line one line one is the bottom line that line is touched by this clef i think three times you can see it looks like three times yeah that's three times you can go to line two line two is touched one two three four times line two is touched by this clef called g clef four times you can check the line three is touched twice line four is also touched twice and line five is also touched the same number that is twice so we if we compare the all the five lines we have seen that line two is touched by g clef four times more than any other line so that line line two is given the name of that clef line two is now called line g because g clef the g clef has touched it more times than any other than any other line so we give that line the name G. Now you have now understood that if we are using the G clef, line two is given the name G. If line two is given the name G, which means any from that line G, the above space is called A and the below space is called F. I hope you understand that. So that I want to take you and show you how that one really works because you need to understand. Like you cannot just assume that way. The line 2 here is given the name G because it has been touched by G clef more times. So the space between line 2 and line 3 is given the name A because after G it is A. The line 3 is given the name B. The space between 3 and 4 is given the name C. The line 4 is given the name D. The space between 4 and 5 is given the name E. And line 5 is given the name F. I hope you understand that from the central point again of this clef we are saying line 2 is the one which is called g so below it there is a space between 2 and 1 that space is given the name f and the line 1 is given the name e below the line e that line 1 which you, which you have given the name e below it there is a space also that space we call it d i hope you are getting it get it understand it keep it and remember this is brahma music still giving you this and if you're new here and of course i knew i know most of you are new like this is your first video you have not seen any before that of this first there was a trailer video before and some people looked at it those ones subscribed and they are now fine now for you the new person here please subscribe there's a button there below subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that when we post new videos you can still see okay we are going we are going um in the next lesson we are supposed to look at the music 
notes. There are several notes in music and there are lengths of such notes. So I've just ended this lesson here and I only wanted you to look at their notes. Just to look at them, you can see there is a note called the wall note. We are saying the note, the symbol of the note is there. It's rest and also there is a name and the usually like the number of beats that it normally has so you can look at it for now you can just look at it you can go google and get someone who knows music or who you think has some prior knowledge of music um let him show you these things because we are going to look at them in the next lesson and i don't want you to miss out anything i want you to have everything that's supposed to be there i want you to understand everything that you're supposed to have so i would like to to try and do something yeah? and show you something that you, i have already shown you so i want to to go again and go through this so we're going to say that the music is any sound that's pleasing to your ear and you understand that there are two ways of writing music that is staff notation and solver notation and we say that we are only looking at staff notation for this case uh, there's something called staff a staff is just a number of five parallel lines within with four spaces within them sorry and we say that the staff has five lines which are given their number number names which is one two three four and five from below so the bottom line is called one and the upper line is called five like they were using there uh, if you're using the f clef the same thing and you also if you're using the g clef the same thing you give them the name uh, we're going to look at the clef the clef is we have said that the clef is like a key to the staff it guides you on finding the exact letter name of the staff and there are three types of clefs there's g clef f clef and c clef yeah this is called f clef and the, the line called four has been touched by this clef more times than any other line so that line is given the name f of that clef also we have an um, clef called c clef this c clef has touched line three more times than any other and it's in its middle so we give that line three the name c and the other lines get their names from there uh, we have the treble clef which is also called violin clef or soprano clef and its main name is called the g clef it touches line two more times than any other line and that line two is given the name g because that is the line that it has touched more times so uh thank you very much for watching and i hope you are understanding these things are just cheap things are very simple and music requires you to be ready like you are there with your pen with your pencil with your rubber because sometimes you need to draw these things like that and that's music it's